I will uh, uh, introduce uh, Dr. Rami Abbas. Uh, Dr. Abbas uh, is a, um, an assistant professor of physical therapy from the Faculty of Health Sciences at Beirut Arab University. And uh, he is uh, the um, head of the physical therapy department at Maqasid General Hospital. Uh, uh, Dr. Abbas uh, will talk to us uh, about, uh, let me see, the, uh, uh, the ex exercise training in COPD, the new perspectives. Dr. Abbas. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizing committee of the conference. Uh, my uh, lecture is how we can uh, clear mucus in physical therapy. Uh, content of the lecture on the basics of normal physiology mucus clearance from physical therapy point of view, uh, air and fluid dynamics, and how physical therapy helps to manage uh, mucus clearance. Uh, as normal physiology, what's mucus? Mucus is composed of 94% water, 3% protein, carbohydrate, lipids, DNA. The bonds are the uh, objective of medication to reduce, the, to break up the bond, to let the mucus be more easily to be uh, get, it, get it out from the body. Uh, normal production per 24 hours per day is uh, major, it's, it's reabsorbed back in the bronchial mucosa. 10 milliliters reach the glottis. Most of this is swallowed. Mucus production increases with lung disease. Of course, I don't want to speak a lot. Uh, smoking, environmental, allergy, infection, genetic predisposition, and foreign bodies. Increased mu mucus production produces the increase in viscosity of mucus. Decrease in ciliary effectiveness, in mucus plugs, airway resistance, and infections. The seed that, that increased mucus clearance production, we have lots of disease, and you all know them. I will start with the airway histology. Uh, from the histological point of view, we can notice that the mucociliary escalator that helps the clearance of, of secretions is mainly present in large conducting airways and small conducting airways. But in the alveoli, we don't have uh, cilia. The mucus uh, layer, usually the gel is 1 to 2 micrometer. The sole is 4 to 8 micrometer. Uh, surface epithelial cells, we have many cells. Submucosal gland, bronchial gland that, has found in, that are found in submucosa, found down in the terminal bronchiole, are uh, innervated by sympathetic control, vagus nerve, and provide the majority of mucus secretions. The total volume is 40 times greater than the goblet cells. Uh, the mucociliary escalator is like a blanket. Uh, the cilia are, are well equ equipped to move the to move the mucus two centimeters per minute. The protective function of the cilia, I know it's an introductory, but I, I'm needing it to explain our point of view. Uh, its, its protective function is to remove trapped and inhaled particles, antimicrobial, humidification, and insulation. Mucus also protects the epithelial cells from toxic materials. This is the action of the, the cilia that we can see from both sides, from the top and from the uh, yeah, lateral view, that, can, yeah, that takes around 7 milliseconds to do the whole uh, range of it. Uh, mucociliary escalator is only applicable in conducting airways containing cilia, and it's not present in the alveoli. So how can we, can, as physical therapists, train uh, mucus or uh, secretions from the alveoli. And second, uh, our approach is not to, uh, to make the cilia work more or less. Uh, another thing in the, his, uh, in the histology is the presence of the cone spore that I will explain later, why uh, we can use these spores to, in, pul in uh, pulmonary rehabilitation. The main factors affecting mucus displacements thus are the viscosity of the mucus, which is not our topic, Inhaled and expired air dynamics, this is where we work. And ciliary motion, I think we don't have uh, any work to do in ciliary motion. This is, so we as physical therapists in mucus clearance, we mainly focus on inhaled and expired air, and we are based on uh, physiological and physical uh, basics that are aerodynamics. Air fluid dynamics, air flow through tubes. As air flow through a tube, the pressure, a pressure difference exists between the ends of the tube. This pressure, presence, this pressure difference depends on the rate and the pattern of air flow. This is what we are going to manage. Air flow at low flow rates is usually laminar, and I will explain what's laminar. And turbulent air flow will be at higher flow rates. Uh, 
What's uh, laminar? Laminar flow is parallel streams of flow. Velocity at the center is twice as fast as the edge of the tube. And there is a physical law, Poiseuille law, that describes the resistance to a flow through a tube. Uh, pressure increases proportionally to the flow rate and gas viscosity. And the, the smaller the airway radius, the longer distance uh, increases the flow resistance. Uh, this is the formula I want to see. The formula I just want to see the, you know, on the uh, down on the uh, uh, that that reducing R by 16% will double the resistance of the airway, and reducing R the radius by 50% will increase resistance by 16-fold. Uh, this is what we call the Poisson flow, the laminar flow. That is mainly. It's double at the center and it's half of the, at the periphery. This is the laminar flow that occurs at low flow rate. Turbulent flow occurs at higher flow rate and it causes local eddy currents. Eddy currents that are like this that will go on to break up the secretions if the flow is at high lung volume or a high flow rate. Uh, another uh, physical uh, uh, fact is that there is the Bernoulli's effect that uh, when we do an expiration in the in a physiological or uh, in in uh, uh, airways in the in human airways we will have a compression or a collapse dependent on the presence uh, of the flow of the blood, uh, the air that's going out from the from the alveoli and if we consider here this is the alveoli and we do an expiration there will be, at a certain place, there will be a compression or a, a collapse in the airways. So, so how can we use what we just said to, uh, to manage uh, mucus? Uh, we can increase air entry to alveoli. This is what we call the interdependence. That the mechanism whereby air may be moved into small airways obstructed by secretion by increasing tidal volume. So what we do is that we ask the patient to inspire, to hold a little bit the breath. So we will use the cone spore to do what's called interdependence. That during inspiration, expanding alveoli exert a force on adjacent alveoli described as interdependence and it may assist in the re-expansion of collapsed alveoli. This is because we don't have cilia. The effects of interdependence are believed to be more marked during deep breathing. What I meant is here and on the right, we have here uh, collapsed alveoli, and this is a normal, uh, normal uh, diffused alveoli. So the interdependence between the cone spore will help the, the, the air to enter the closed alveoli. The halving mechanism that we use as physical therapists, when air flow uh, over a thick mucus layer, shear forces develop on the surface of the liquid layer. This is what we call the shear force that we are using by the expired air to help the mucus to move from a place to another. And we have lots of patients with COPD that have, don't have uh, good working cilia and the cilia muscular cilia, and ciliary escalator is not working good. So we can use the expired air to push on the mucus plug. It's proportional to the square of the airflow velocity. When a shear force exceeds surface tension in mucus layer, there will be in, uh, mucus will begin to move in the direction of the airflow, and finally, the mucus flow is greater when expiratory airflow velocity is increased by at least 10% compared to inspiratory velocity. This is what I meant by the Bernoulli's effect. If we do the expiration at low, very low lung volume, the narrowing or the bronchoconstruction will, will, will be done at the level that is very uh, close to the alveoli. If, if we do it at a higher lung volume, the, the, the effect will be on more distal or more peripheral uh, airways. The force expiratory technique has the half yani is a combination of one or more or two or more ex, uh, force expiration halves and periods of breathing control, having to low lung volumes should assist in loosening and mobilizing excess bronchial secretions from smaller peripheral airways to larger central airways. And when secretions reach the larger upper airways, a huff or cuff can be done with high lung volume to clear them. Uh, there are, of course, I will speak about evidence uh, later on. Uh, force expiratory maneuver are probably the most effective part of chest physiotherapy in, uh, for, clear, for mucus clearance. The coughing mechanism is achieved by rapid airflow acceleration and extremely high 
uh, flow rate, when coupled with dynamic airway compression, is very effective in squeezing and clearing mucus from airflow, uh, airways, cuff can be directed in trained patients. Uh, as cuff mechanics, the inspiration is generally deeper, about one and a half uh, times of the tidal volume, increasing elastic recoil. High intrapulmonary pressures are built up behind the glottis. When the glottis open, supramaximal turbulent expiratory flow are generated. During cuff, the posterior membranous portion of the trachea is compressed and tracheal diameter is narrowed at about one-sixth of the normal. With an increase in flow rate of sevenfold during the cuff, the linear velocity increases to 42 folds. This is what makes the turbulence and will, will help us to clear the mucus. Airflow at the site of compression is turbulent and makes the sound what that we call cough. Active cycle of breathing, another method we use, it's uh, divided into three parts. The first, the breathing control, normal tidal breath. Thoracic expansion exercise to deep inspiratory breath with the hold to have the interdependence in the cone spore. And finally, the force expiratory technique, one or two halves, from low to high lung volume, to, and that can be repeated in, or, repeated in order to mobilize and clear bronchial secretions. Why the hold? I repeat here, because we want the air to enter the uh, closed or uh, blocked uh, alveoli and to help, and the expired air will help in the mucus clearance. Autogenic drainage is uh, another technique that we use. It's divided into phase one uh, to unstick uh, in the expiratory reserve, to unstick, then to collect with higher lung volume, and uh, finally evacuate with more high uh, and more uh, rapid uh, airway uh, flow. Does this, what we are saying, is theoretical or is it evidence? Evidence uh, is, uh, you know, Dr. Shami has uh, spoken good about evidence in pulmonary rehabilitation, but here I'm taking just a part, that is the mucus clearance. Uh, uh, many recommended guidelines, I have chosen, I've chosen one. First, lip breathing has been found to be quality of B and C, it needs more research. Uh, slow and deep breathing, C. The active expiration, B and C. Uh, coughing and huffing and autogenic drainage are A and B, A2 and B. And positive expiratory pressure, A2 and B. Uh, I just want to thank you for, for the listening. Uh, thank you very saying. much, uh, Professor. Right. And thank you for the, uh, finishing a bit early because you were pressed for time. Yes. <laughs> I, um, I will start with a uh, actually uh, simple question. Yes. Uh, do you think that uh, the chest physiotherapy that we do on our patients that have secretions, do you think uh, there is a certain way of doing it that can give us more benefit? Uh, 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 and what does the patient have to do meanwhile? Uh, uh, according to my experience in the hospital, uh, physical therapy, chest physical therapy is essential and it prevents lots of complications. There is a problem with the third party Layers, of course, but if we uh, took this part apart, yani if we take it apart, yani without speaking about uh, financial and uh, uh, management problems, it's very effective because all physicians that tried what's the benefit of post-operative physical therapy or bedridden uh, physical therapy patient uh, for physical therapy bedridden. No, no, yeah, I, I, no, I, I was talking about respiratory therapy when we do the clapping and things like no, that. No, no, the clap, yeah, to... yeah, as you say, I didn't spoke about clapping because clapping is, is it's D, it's nothing. Because it's clapping, so it's not, it, it does no, not confer any significant benefit. No, no, essentially right. you have, must manage the expiratory flow. So if you use the expiratory flow, you will help the secretions to, to, get, you know, to be excreted with 10 so to 15 minutes. So training the patients to breathe properly yes, exactly. and use yeah. maneuvers properly is more yeah. effective and exactly. better than the uh, no, clapping that we do. No, 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 it's nothing. Yeah, and for COPD, uh, we teach them for, at many instances because there are something, you know, sometimes small uh, tricks that the patient will learn by time. And uh, if it's a chronic case, it's easy. Yani, uh, the problem is the acute cases, yani post-operative. This is you have to teach them. It's not a patient, a chest patient. And you are preventing. You are uh, getting out the secretions to prevent a complication. But if you have a chronic patient, he will learn the maneuver and he will do them. And he, will, he can yani, be followed up every three to six months. And the maneuver are, ve yani, are very easy but tricky. Yani, you have to choose. It's like the problem with the inhaler. 
that you, that chest physician have and know how to use the inhaler. So once they get it right, it's when, very effective. Exactly, it's, and a it's very, very efficient, uh, and uh, and you get the secretions uh, excreted cleared. now, not uh, later, yeah, within one hour maximum. Excellent. Any other questions? Yes, we'll we'll take one of the two who, who was first, because <laughs> we're really pressed for time. Alarasi. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, I want to say. Uh, the ask you if uh, mucohumidificators are useful for... Uh, for uh, 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 humidificators? No, mucolytics. Mu uh, mucolytics. Mucolytics, uh, mucolytics are... Aerosol therapy. Yes. Uh, uh, mucolytics, uh, yeah, the way of action is on the bonds of the mucus that I explained in the first slide. And in the beginning of the slides, I said, you know, mucus is composed of... Uh, it's, yeah, it has bonds. The bonds are responsible for the viscosity. So all the medication, which is not my specialty, are working to break the bonds to make the mucus more, more, yani, more viscous uh, and to be excreted and to, yani, to make the uh, job easy for the, uh, for the cilia to take it up, take it out. But it's not our job. We have what we do, and we can use a humidifier, okay, yani, humidify the inspired air to help the, the secretions be more humid, more, more uh, yani less viscous, so that they can get out. But uh, as a physical therapist, uh, it's not my, my part. Very quick, Hakim, Allah khalik. giving hypertonic solutions to Increase uh, excretion of secretion. I worked with I didn't do a research concerning. But I didn't do a research concerning. I didn't do a research so maneuvers essentially. Yeah. Exactly. But the children and the elderly. The children and the elderly. It's the most. The most. effect. I mean, if I want to say my opinion, as a pediatric with premature, and I had cases, hopeless cases of atelectasis that has been treated for one and a half day, طلع من the intensive care. بيوم ونص يعني. بس. لأنه يو أر مان يعني أنت بالاتلكتس بدك مشكلتك إنه بدك تعمل بوزيف انتري لل مجرد ما خليت الهواء يدخل على الـ على الـ على الالفيولاي وعملت مانجينج بتطليع الهواء مش الحال ثانك يو دكتور عباس